to study about the fertilization in wallworks in the last lecture we have studied about the sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction but in this uh, lecture we will study about how the fertilization in the wallworks will occur we know that in the sexual colonies of the wallworks asexual colonies are absent so this is a sexual colony of wallworks you can label it a sexual colony of wallbox these are the cells which are present on the peripheral region and these are small structures which are known as flagella so these structures which are uh, looking in red color these are the enterocytes which were produced in a process which we have studied in the last lecture but here another structure is also known this structure is known as oogonium and we have studied in the last lecture the production of anthocyte as well as oogonium but now in this lecture we will study how the fertilization will occur and what are the stages in the fertilization so this is a uh, an oogonium and it have two ends one is a broader end and this end is a taper end at the taper end there is an aperture aperture or an opening at this opening the anthidia can enter into the oogonium this is an oogonium and this point is known as aperture and this aperture is used for the entry of anthocyte into the oogonium this point or aperture is known as receptive spot receptive spot when receptive spot open only single anthocyte can enter into uh, the oogonium through a receptive spot and fertilize it when this structure which is known as female structure which is known as oogonium when it is fertilized then it is known as zygote zygote when uh, to understand better we will take this structure out from the colony so we will take this structure out of the colony basically this is fertilized oo spore after the fertilization this structure will produce a pigment which is known as hematochrome 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 and due to presence of this hematochrome the color of this will be turned into orange red orange red color will be formed but keep in mind when the fertilization occur then this is known as zygote or oospore oospore <coughs> after the fertilization it secrete a thick wall around it it produce a thick wall around it basically this is a secreted wall and if we try to study about this secreted wall this secreted wall is basically composed of three layers the number one layer is known as oxospore oxospore basically is the outer most layer of this oospore oxospore and number two which is the middle layer of this oxospore is known as mesospore and the third innermost layer is known as endospore 
endospore. But keep in mind this structure is still present inside the colony like this. This is a colony, mother colony, and in this colony, these are ankylosides which fertilize the egg and produce oospore, and this oospore have three layers like this. These are two layers and now I am drawing the third layer. These are the flagella. As you know these are flagellated cells of the colony. These are the flagellated cells of the colony. <coughs> we can label it flagellated cells these are antherozoids which is a basically male part and this is a female part this structure when it, is, it was fertilized then it secrete a thick layer around it and convert it into oospore but this oospore have three layers and we will try to label this layer basically these are the three layers which is a thick layer which is composed of these three layers here we also can label this is the outer layer and this outer layer is known as oxosubore This is inner layer, sorry middle layer and this middle layer is known as mesospore and this is an innermost layer and this innermost layer is known as endospore. Endospore. Here the point is that this oospore this oospore have three layers but around the oospore there is a parental colony this whole colony is basically parental colony parental colony also known as mother colony this colony whole colony will disintegrate and after the disintegration of this colony that means mother colony will disintegrate and after the disintegration of this whole colony this oospore will come out and oospore will come out of the colony. After the disintegration of this colony, oospore will come out. When this oospore will come out like this, it have three layers. Still it have three layers and the name which is present outermost is known as agospore, the middle layer is known as mesospore and the innermost layer is known as endospore. After the emergence or removal, after the disintegration of whole colony, this oospore will come out and after the coming out from the colony, it, its outermost two layers. What are the outermost two layers? Number one is Azospore and number two is mesospore. These both 
layers will rupture and after the rupture this ooze pore will come out from these two layers but only single layer which is known as endospore is still present like this this is an endospore it means the innermost layer but protoplast of the cell will come out from this layer in the form of vesicle it means that this layer will form small vesicle how the vesicle will form from this layer like this these are the vesicles which are forming from this innermost layer but now it is outer layer the protoplast of this oospore will migrate into these vesicles the protoplast of this oospore will migrate into these vesicles these vesicles will grow and produce a new colony keep in mind i am trying to repeat this lecture fertilization in the pore works basically this is a mother colony and mother colony or a parental colony have both type of gametes and thyrozytes as well as oogonium and thyrozytes will move and enter into oogonium through a pore which is known as aperture and because it receive the anthrozyte so that's why this is known as receptive spot when this anthrozyte will come inside it can fertilize but keep in mind only single anthrozyte can enter into the oospore or a oogonium after the fertilization this zygote secrete a thick layer around it and now it is known as oospore after the secretion of thick layer this is known as oospore but when it become oospore it increase a pigment which is known as hematochrome due to more production of hematochrome the color of this will turn orange red so it means they will appear like orange in orange red in color so this is a secreted layer but originally it is composed of three three layers the first layer is known as oospore second layer is known as mesospore and innermost layer is known as endospore so what they more i try to draw a whole structure here is the main portion these are the anthrozyte and i try to make understand better in the same colony i have draw i have drawn these three layers the outermost layer is oospore middle layer is mesospore mesospore and endospore but after the disintegration of this whole colony this oospore will come out from this colony and now we can see that this oospore is without colony it means this is present outside when they will come outside from the colony two outermost layers number 1 oospore layer and the number 2 which is known as mesospore they will disintegrate when they will disintegrate then this layer which was known as endospore this is the innermost layer now it is not covered by upper two layers because these layer are now disintegrated or ruptured then such type of a layer is formed a structure is formed this structure this structure produce the vesicle around it like this 
these are the small vesicle which are far around it now the protoplast of the cell will migrate from this portion to these vesicle when the protoplast is migrated in such type of vesicle then these vesicle grow and produce a new wall of cells in such a way a new colony is formed so this was all about the fertilization in the wall box